Welcome back to Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin 2. Last episode, we visited the Valley of Repose, and basically just got our first treasure and met the Red Pikmin. And in this episode, the game begins in proper. Uh, we start seeing more mechanics of getting treasures, fighting enemies, growing Pikmin, taking out obstacles, and even our first dungeon. That's all going to happen in this episode. Pretty jam-packed. In Olimar's, spider senses are tingling. Good morning, workers. Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? <laughs> ah. The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures. You're even more lazy. You just sit on top of this ship and yell at us. Nor do they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press A to call them out. Ha! <laughs> it's an onion. <laughs> Olimar runs underneath the onion and, like, goes up and calls, Get out of here! No, he gently toggles the A button and lets the Pikmin just come out just like that. And there's our completed army. Our, uh, red army, so to speak. <laughs> I remember I said that exact line uh, in the first Pikmin, so I figured I'd say it now. Tradition. And if this happens in Pikmin 3, I will say it as well. Because, yes, I plan to one day do a Let's Play of Pikmin 3. Maybe even blind when it comes out. How sweet would that be? <laughs> oh, boy, that's something to look forward to. Uh, anyway, you can see there's some huge pellet posies growing. In the first game, they never got this big. So clearly, uh, someone's been genetically enhancing these pellet posies, even though it's wintry and they sh really shouldn't be growing well here. But we'll ignore that because it's convenient to just get picked in without actually having to fight anything. Much less risk, but also less exciting. So yeah, that's I guess that's kind of why the earlier areas might have more pellet posies, and the later ones won't have nearly any. That's kind of a tradition in the Pikmin games, you know, with a whole two to go on to talk about tradition. And... So the beginning areas will have more pellet posies just so you can grow enough Pikmin to fight things. And then from there you can provide for yourself more easily with a Pikmin group to fight things. Because when you defeat enemies and bring them back, you generally get more Pikmin than just from pellet posies. Of course you can also get lucky and occasionally find a giant pellet just sitting by itself. But that happens more often in the first Pikmin game than it does in this game. Yeah, there are quite a few differences actually. And like I said, we'll talk about them as we, we find them along the way. Well, as long as we're on our way back, I'm going to show you another little interesting thing about throwing. Uh, yes, you can throw a Pikmin normally, but you can also hold down A and carry a Pikmin with you. See, Olimar has grabbed the Pikmin and is now running with it, holding it in his hand. Um, and while you run and release the A button, the Pikmin will fly further. So that's kind of nice. I guess if you wanted to, that could be a good strategy for throwing Pikmin across areas that they, nor that they normally couldn't get through. Kind of a form of sequence breaking, I suppose. And of course, two captains working together in a single unit are able to pull those Pikmin sprouts very, very quickly. And we have a second brown bag here, but unlike the first that took 15 to weigh down, this one takes 35, so even 30 is not enough. Wow, it's really filled with a lot of compressed air. It's a really creative obstacle, but on, on one hand, though, it's hardly ever used in the game. Believe it or not, after you crush that one, there's only going to be one more in the next area, which we're going to crush pretty quickly. Or I should say relatively early. And now up here, uh, another pellet posy has bloomed. I guess they all have specific times at which they bloom because all the others were already active. And that one just took a little while to sprout. Just like in the first game. One of the improvements about this game over the first, though, um, is that your Pikmin won't just kill the sprouts before the pellet posy pellet can actually bloom. That was one thing that always annoyed me about the first was the Pikmin would just see a sprout and try and cut it down regardless of whether or not there was anything growing on it yet. And that always pissed me off. And now we have a pretty good uh, sizable army, 47. A respectable amount and can actually defeat just about anything if we, that we want if we were really tactful about it. Although, of course, they're kind of slow. Leaf Pikmin aren't exactly the fastest. So, in that case, it's up to us to direct them out of harm's way with the C-Stick. Or onto the enemy with the C-Stick. Whichever comes in handy at the time. And we let the air out by throwing the Pikmin on top of the bag. And now, uh, it's day two, so from this point on, all enemies will be able to kill Pikmin if they have the capacity to. What I mean by that is that previously, it wasn't possible for Pikmin to die because it was a tutorial day. But now, uh, enemies can fight us. So for fighting giant enemies like Red Bulb or the Sleep, I suggest getting behind them and then throwing at their backs to uh, weather down their HP. And just like that, we were able to defeat it without taking any hits. Um, and by hits, I mean casualties. Yeah, it's not easy to do a no-death run of the game. It requires a lot of resetting, and that's not my intention. 
I wonder actually how long we're going to be able to go without getting deaths. Tomorrow, um, and I mean the next in-game day, we're probably going to lose Pikmin then. Just cause I'm not the best Pikmin 2 player. Even after all the times I've beat it, I have to say there are plenty of things that can go wrong. So really, all that it comes down to is expecting for things to go wrong, because they will. And then you'll actually have a better chance of avoiding whatever will go wrong. So the Pikmin are working on a white wall over there. It's a standard barrier that basically just blocks you from getting into a new area, just like the first Pikmin game. Now, while they're working on that wall, we have Olimar supervising. We can have Louie go over here and uh, get these Pikmin grown, so we can have even more to come back as reinforcements to take out whatever is that wall is blocking. Another nice thing about uh, se separating the leaders in this game is that there are some enemies that wander, or sometimes the Pikmin might wander into dangerous situations without your guidance. So if you have one captain who's busy with Pikmin in one area, and another is just uh, taking stuff back to the base, you might want to have that captain uh, come along with him anyway just to make sure that the path is nice and safe for them. Because there might be enemies that you hadn't anticipated. And there are more Pikmin sprouting back there at the Onion, but as long as we have the time, I'm going to take the Pikmin we currently have and check out this crushed can over there. Like, it looks kind of suspicious because it's so colorful. And it's actually one of the treasures. Because uh, the treasures in this game are all Earth items. If it wasn't obvious, this is planet Earth. I mean, come on, we're on the top of a giant manhole right here. And there's even a snowman over there. Like, this is obviously Earth in the future. Though it's not exactly clear when. Um, it's also not clear if people are no longer on the planet. They might not be. Or they might simply have not been seen yet. Personally, I'm pretty sure that people aren't alive anymore in whatever timeline this is. And so for uh, people from Hakate who have never seen anything on Earth before, our garbage is basically like treasure to them, which is a pretty novel idea, I think. Of course, this also led to a bunch of uh, catchphrases for the game being one man's trash is another man's treasure. Actually, I have the uh, official Nintendo guide for this game. That's not necessarily what I'm good at, why I'm good at it. Um, I'm just good at it having played it. Believe it or not, that guy's not very helpful. How can Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When mass, their might is ferocious. Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? You and your protocol! Apparently not. Olimar, you're failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Press A to grab Pikmin and release to throw them. Call them into a group with B. Press X to disband the group. You see to issue orders and objectives to the group. C is useful for swarming Pikmin around treasure and enemies, or making them march in a line. Yeah, but marching in a line isn't really practical, but it does look pretty cool. <laughs> Though, I doubt we're ever going to do it. Hey, I might do it just for kicks on one of these days, because I said we wouldn't do it. And so we're uh, carrying back this crushed can. Like, I was, I was talking about the uh, Nintendo strategy guide. There are a lot of problems with it. Like, it's nice that they have the full in-game maps of each area, but they're wrong about a lot of the information in the guide. Like, especially for the last maps of the last area, they, sh they show paths for carrying back each treasure. But there was an error when they were making it, I'm guessing, because a lot of the air a lot of the arrows that show where the treasure goes um, takes it off the boundaries of the map and back to the ship. So this is just called the utter scrap. And apparently it can hold 250 milliliters or something. I just noticed that now. And I think maybe it was Jugger Conroy who observed that the front of the utter scrap looks like the face of the president. <laughs> which is a pretty uh, accurate observation. And over here we have a snowman. Just like in Mother, if you've ever heard that theme. Do, 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 do. I'd sing the rest for you. Maybe I might some other time when we explore the Valley of Repose. Anyway, I brushed against that right there because plants are also encountered in the Piclopedia. You encounter them by brushing up against them. So I brushed up against that plant, so now we have it in our Piclopedia. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear. The leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod, too. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. That there is an entrance to a dungeon. Anytime you see one of those, it means that you can go into a new dungeon in, in uh, an area. Now, we can't proceed any further in this area because Pikmin will drown in that water if they're red. They can't swim in the water. The red Pikmin can't swim. And this dungeon is called the Emergence Cave. It's the first dungeon in the game. Um, basically, it's more of a tutorial than a real dungeon. So there's only two floors, and they basically just introduce you to the way dungeons work. And I'll be able to explain more about how dungeons work next episode, because we have spent a lot of time 
uh, just doing stuff this episode. So I guess we'll do this dungeon next episode. So here we have the little cutscene that's just uh, us getting used to this new underground world. Intriguing. My heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Analysis suggests subterranean areas may support different life forms on the surface. If you wish to check underground terrain, press start slash pause to communicate with me. I'm not just a ship. I'm an all-purpose support pod. Oh yeah.